Hi, everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about Project Gutenberg, which is a U.S. based nonprofit that digitizes public domain books. In other words, they digitize books that don't have a copyright. So, what's great about this nonprofit is that they make these books available to the public online as ebooks, ePubs, and more. So, lots of different formats. The story is not often told, but in my opinion, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. So in this episode, we'll learn a little bit more about it, how it got started, and how you can take advantage of this free content. But before we get to that, let's start with a joke. Why did the Romanians stop reading for the night? Any ideas? To give his book a rest. <laughs> So you're probably thinking I was going to say something about Dracula, but nope, this one wasn't too clever. So why is this funny? Well, it's pretty much because Bucharest is the capital of Romania and to give a book a rest means to stop reading it for a while. To give something a rest is actually pretty common. You might hear actually a mom tell a child, hey, give that phone a rest or give that iPad a rest and go outside and play for a while. So once again, why did the Romanian stop reading for the night? To give his book a rest. All right, so today we're going to talk about the expression by the book. Let's go through the individual words in this expression before I give you its meaning and its usage. By has a few uses in this expression by the book. It means in accordance with, according to, or as far as something is concerned. So, hey mom, can I go to the movies? Yep, fine by me. In other words, according to me, it's fine. The is a definitive article. I like the house, so I know which house, that specific one. Book, a book is a written or, yeah, normally a written or illustrated collection of pages. Oftentimes they contain words and can appear in digital or printed formats. So I read a great book at the library. So the definition of by the book means according to the rules or by societal standards. In most cases, we do something by the book meaning we do something in strict accordance with the rules or the law or by societal standards. We also go by the book, right? Meaning to follow the rules, right? So where does this expression come from? So there are a lot of different options for the origin of this expression. Uh, one early cited reference came from 1833 when the book was the Bible. And when you did things by the book, it meant in accordance with the rules of the Bible. However, it was written in an earlier text, actually in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Romeo kissed Juliet, and this is the conversation that followed. So Romeo said, sin from thy lips, right? Thy is an old English word for your. I love thy hair would be, I love your hair in old English. So sin from your lips. Oh, trespass sweetly urged. So in modern language, sort of bring it on, right? <laughs> bring on that sin. I'm all for it. Uh, give me my sin again. And Juliet responds, you kiss by the book. Um, and so if we are to interpret this the way that we just learned by the book, Julia would be saying, hey, uh, you kiss the way you're supposed to kiss. You're kissing according to the rules. Um, which is a very big burn, or ouch, poor Romeo. He's speaking very poetically or romantically, and Juliet says that in response. But then again, who knows, Shakespeare did create a lot of new expressions for the English language, and this could have meant something entirely different in his book, or according to him. <laughs> so let's go through some examples of 
by the book. Example number one. Recently, my dad decided to help my brother add a new room to his house. It was a long and very painful process of measuring and making sure that all of the structures inside were up to code. He wanted to be sure that everything was by the book. In other words, in accordance with the regulations so that the inspector would come and approve it. And luckily for them, he did. Example number two, when my husband and I were still dating, we went back and forth between Brazil and the United States. He's from Sao Paulo. He always stayed a few days under the time limit, right? The 90 day time limit as a tourist, just because we wanted to do everything by the book. We wanted to do everything in accordance with the law. And we're very thankful for that nowadays because we're in the process of getting his green card. And because we did everything by the book, we haven't had any problems so far. Example number three. So since my daughter Julia was born, I've done everything by the book. I've done everything in the way that it's recommended in societal standards and according to the American Association of Pediatrics. I haven't put blankets in her bed to avoid SIDS, sudden instant death. I've always strapped her very tightly in her car seat before driving and started feeding her the exact foods she should start eating at the exact period of time she should start eating them. So I don't know what to do on my own. I am very clueless. And so I might as well go by the book, right? I might as well follow what is recommended. So once again, to do something by the book means by the rules. All right, so let's go ahead and do a listen and repeat exercise so that you can practice your pronunciation. We'll use the sentence, everything is by the book. So repeat after me, everything, everything is, everything is by, everything is by the, Everything is by the book. Everything is by the book. Everything is by the book. And the conjugation, repeat after me. I go by the book. You go by the book. He goes by the book. She goes by the book. We go by the book. They go by the book. It goes by the book. Right? And once again, we can use this go by the book when you want to say, I follow the rules. For example, someone might say, Hey, can you pull some tax loopholes for me? Can you find some ways I can pay? less tax. Your accountant might say, hmm, no, I'm sorry, I go by the book, right? I do everything according to the law, and you've had every legal loophole you can possibly have. On to the topic of the day, Project Gutenberg. So when I say a book is in the public domain, what does that mean to you? The meaning of public domain in English is that it is available to the public, to the people, without any copyright. So according to American copyright law, a book enters the public domain 70 years after an author's death, 95 years after its publication, or 125 years from its creation date. Now, whichever happens first is when the book will become available to you, to us, meaning that it can be altered and distributed. It is yours to use. So a collection of 59,500 books have been digitized and made accessible online by Project Gutenberg, a well-known nonprofit based out of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. When Michael Hart started Project Gutenberg in 1971, he was just a college student at the University of Illinois, and somehow he got unlimited use and access to a university computer, the Xerox Sigma 5, and decided to do something really useful with that time. He thought, why not give a gift to the world? So he set a goal for himself. 
by the year 2000, he wanted to digitize 10,000 books. 10,000 books that had entered the public domain. What better publication to start with than the heavily referenced Declaration of Independence of the United States? Hart called this project Project Gutenberg after Johannes Gutenberg, a German inventor and creator of the movable type printing press. After all, Gutenberg was an inspiration for him. He had enabled the creation and distribution of books as early as the mid-1440s. And now Hart was kind of following in his footsteps. Instead of the creation of physical books, he was going to distribute already existing books to audiences in all corners of the world. The goal of the project was to encourage the creation and distribution of e-books. Not just that, though. He wanted them in as many available formats as possible. Michael saw the electronic versions of books a simple way to promote literacy, right? Literacy is the ability to read, but also to protect originals from catastrophe. So a library with first edition books or maybe even a museum with originals could burn down. But a system of books set up on many different servers, yeah, it would be very difficult to burn. So in the beginning, the process was very slow, naturally, right? I mentioned Xerox before. So page by page, texts were photocopied. But as time passed, the technology improved, and so did the number of people interested in helping him reach that goal. So as of July 2019, the project was just 400 books shy of 60,000 available books. You're probably thinking, oh, this is wonderful, but how does this even affect me? So you, as an internet user, have access to all of these books too. They're online. You also have access to their close partners at LibriVox, which contains free audiobooks of titles in the public domain. As of July 2019, free audio files for over 13,000 books were on their website. And the thing is, they're not bad. So although you won't find any new releases you would find at a regular bookstore, uh, there are quite a few very popular books, including a lot of great options for English learners. Um, so for an intermediate level, for example, you could read Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz, and uh, there are also some more challenging bestsellers, such as War and Peace, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, Pride and Prejudice, and A Tale of Two Cities. And this is just to name a few. There's a, actually a list on their website with the top 100 ebook downloads that are definitely worth checking out if you're interested in reading. They also update another list that shows the most popular downloads per month so you can see what's hot and what's not. You can also search on both of these sites for author, title, genre, which is the same thing as subject, um, or language. Uh, although there are far more books in English than any other language, at least at this point in time. If you are interested in helping out, if you want to add a few more languages to the list, you are more than welcome to record your own audiobook. <laughs> you can also join the online community of proofreaders called the Distributed Proofreaders. So they go over the text and make sure there are not too many significant errors within it. So why not check it out? Uh, you can learn English <laughs> by the book, with the books. <laughs> See if you can find some great books on there. I hope you find this useful and until next time, bye.